All right, I'm going to show you how to do a simple circuit analysis. This may be your first drill, and you're getting the hang of using a spreadsheet to solve some mathematical formulas in a circuit. So this one's going to be a pure parallel circuit. Keep that in mind. There's only one load in each branch. That's why I say it's pure parallel. And uh, we have four branches, or four rungs four different loads. We've got the resistance value in ohms listed here and the supply voltage. So in our spreadsheet the first thing we should do probably at the top is uh, maybe type in resistor number because we're going to list just one through whatever you know they're labeled because we have them labeled our 1, 2, 3, and 4. So let's label these R1, R2. And <clears throat> in spreadsheets, if you have a pattern started, if you left click and highlight those two boxes and come to the bottom right corner and now left click and drag when you see that X, you then continue the pattern. And then we have totals. Okay. So I'm going to put right here the ohm value for each one of those loads. I'm going to put here the current in each load. The voltage drop. and then the wattage. Now sometimes these items can be abbreviated I for current. Voltage drops a lot of times we just go with E. E1, E2, E3 and the wattage can be P for power. And I just put those abbreviations in there so in case you see them somewhere else, uh, you'll know. And ohms is resistance. So in this circuit, we are given these values. Now, as a student, if you're doing a circuit analysis, probably one of the best tricks you could do for yourself is to left click on this tab, hold it, drag it, and now I've drugged that tab out of here. Okay, I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to cut this sheet in half. Just doing the restore tab in the middle. And now I can look at the drawing and my spreadsheet at the same time. This is going to be very handy when you do PLCs and you have to do an I.O. list and you're looking at a drawing. This is very handy to know. So I'm just going to highlight each one of these values. And I'm doing a copy and paste. My mouse has special buttons on it for that, but you would be doing maybe shortcut keys. Or you could type them in if you don't feel like doing that. And now I have my values in here. Those are my resistance values. Now in a parallel circuit, I cannot add those up to get my total, only in a series circuit. So here I'm going to apply my voltage. I'm going to go ahead and copy that number. And under my total voltage right here, I now have the supply voltage. Now that's all that I have. Now I want this sheet to react to changes of these values. These are my known values right now. So for, in order for us to, to keep track of these different sheets and what they can do for us, it's kind of handy to highlight what your known values are or highlight the cells where you're going to input data or change data. So I like to do that. I like to highlight my cells yellow to signify to myself that I can change any of these cells and the rest of the sheet will react to it. So we have our known values. This is our circuit. Now we know from the rules in a parallel circuit 
that the voltage is the same. That means the voltage across each one of these loads is going to be 24 volts. That means whatever I enter in as my total voltage is going to be the same across each load. Now, I know there's shortcuts, but for a sheet this small, if you type in the equal sign to tell this cell that you want to do some operation, and then select this cell, D6, you can copy this formula and then just simply paste it in each cell. And now when you change the total voltage, that whole cell, all those cells will react to that. So let's make these all in the center. So I'm just lining up the numbers to make it easier for me to see. So now if I change this, let's say 44 volts, they all react to that. Okay. So I know that my voltage drops are going to autocorrect and I can change this in the yellow box. Well now if I have two known values, I can solve for either of the unknowns. And that is done through our circuit rule sheet. We can look at this wheel and decide. Let's say that I want to solve for wattage. Okay, I know my voltage and I know my resistance. Well here's your wattage column and I know my voltage and my resistance so this formula E squared divided by resistance would give me my wattage. Okay, Or if I want to solve for my current, which is the most common thing, if I want to solve for amperage, here's my E over R, voltage divided by resistance. For this example, I'm going to use that formula. So I press equals to let this cell know I'm going to do a formula. I'm going to take the voltage applied across that load and I'm going to divide it by this resistance. Now noticing I'm referencing cells and I'm going to hit enter. Now this by default gives me a lot of decimal places and I really don't want that many in my answer. So what I'm going to do is highlight all these cells and I'm going to tell it right here to decrease the amount of decimal places. And I'm going to keep clicking this until I get uh, about that many. That's pretty good. Four decimal places. Now I need the same formula for each row. All I have to do is get that X, left click and drag it down, and now it has performed that same operation for each row. Now we know that in order to solve the total current, we need to add up the branch currents. So right here I can do the sum of all these. Well, we have a little formula bar right here, a function bar, sum. It immediately says sum of what? I'm going to highlight the cells I want to add together and hit enter. Now I know the total current in this circuit. Again I know two known values I can solve for an unknown. So in here, I'm going to type in equals E over I. Voltage divided by the total current gives me the total resistance. And I'm going to reduce the decimal places here as well. Now at a glance, I know I'm right because there's a rule that says the total resistance is always lower than the lowest resistance in a pure parallel circuit. Here we have 4 ohms, and that's our answer, so I know... I'm on the right track. For wattage, we have this formula for watts. P equals I times Z spells the word pi. Really easy to remember. Let's use that formula. Equals E I, here we go, I times E, voltage times resistance. So there's our wattage. We need that same formula all the way down including our total wattage, total voltage times total current. I'm going to reduce the amount of decimal places here. And 
you'll notice that for wattage we used E over I but there's a way you can check this by also adding up these wattages whether we have a series or parallel circuit we can add all our individual wattages to get total wattage or we can take voltage divided by current and get our total wattage so in this cell I'm going to do my sum function and I'm going to add up all these individual wattages and you could see I came out with the same answer using two separate formulas and I know that I'm right now let's say that I wanted to analyze my wattages like I said and all these devices are rated for let's say 100 watts well we could see that the only one that would survive would be one this one right here let's say that these were all rated at 5 watts we could see that the ones that would survive would be this one and this one. Well, it's kind of hard if you had a lot of different loads to keep analyzing it that way. So there is an easier way. Let's highlight all your cells and right click. And you want to do a little trick called conditional formatting. And in here, we're going to tell this cell that if it is greater than whatever this wattage is they're rated for let's say they're rated for 10 watts if it's greater than 10 watts then we want to make the background color red and this is the range of cells that we're looking at for this condition now we could see right away the cell that would or the load that would go on us first so there you go we have a complete circuit analysis made now for a pure parallel circuit when we're given all the resistance values and the supply voltage. All right, here we have the same circuit. We still want to perform a circuit analysis, but the problem is we've been given different values. We've been given each of our branch currents and each of our wattages. It's up to us to complete the sheet to figure out everything else. Well, what's really nice is to figure out total current, we know all we need to do is add up each of the branch currents. So I'm going to do the sum of these branch currents. And now I have my total current. Here, my wattages, remember I told you I could add all those up. So I can now perform that same operation with these cells and get my total wattage. Great. And again, I have my known values highlighted in yellow. Well, to figure out voltage, and I know my current and my wattage, let's look at what that formula would be. It looks like wattage over current, P over I, would give me my volts. So, in my cell for voltage, I need to type in equals wattage power divided by current. Notice again I'm referencing cells and hit enter. Well what do you know? This is just like our other example where you were given the supply voltage and it looks like everything's working out. Now I'm going to copy this all the way down because I want the same formula for every single row. Now look, we can solve ohms in a lot of different ways, but the most popular way is E over I. So voltage divided by current. And I need the same formula all the way down. And these are kind of bigger text because I copied and pasted earlier in those cells. So I'm going to go ahead and make everybody the same size. I'll go with 14. And I like to also highlight all my cells and put in a grid. And that's this all borders selector. I just like to darken everything. It makes me easier to, to see for me there. So there you go. We have now a circuit analysis that's going to react if I change these values. So let's say that I have a 4 ohm resistor that's half the wattage. Okay, I'm going to say it's 
uh, we'll say 50 watts, okay, instead of 144. And you'll notice how everything reacted accordingly. 